Alrighty guys, so today we are going to be continuing with balancing chemical equations, but we are finally going to combine it with everybody's favorite thing, dimensional analysis. Okay, so before we do the dimensional analysis portion, we're going to start off just by reviewing the balancing chemical equations. So let's go through a quick example, including writing the state of matter notation that we learned about last time. Okay, so we're just going to start off by balancing. So let's balance this chemical equation. Um, if you're confident doing this on your own, since this is our third video lecture on it, you could pause the video and try it. If not, that's okay. I'm going to go through it step by step. So we're going to start off by splitting up the reaction. And then we're going to count up how many of each element is on both sides. So we have B, O, and H. Those are the three elements that are present on the reactant side. So we're going to write B, O, and H. And we know there's going to be the same types of elements on both sides. So I'm going to write B, O, and H on the product side as well. All right, so let's count them up. So how many borons are there? There are two. Okay, how many oxygens? There's three here and one here. So there's going to be four total. And then for hydrogens, there are two. All right, let's move on to the other side. We're going to start with the hydrogens. There's three hydrogens, there's one boron, and there are three oxygens. So that's how we balance out the equation, or we're not done balancing out yet. That's how we count up how many of each element we have. Now let's uh, start balancing it out. So it looks like there are more borons on this side, the reactant side, than there are on the product side, right? There's two versus one. So that means we have to add another boron to the right side. But we cannot just add a B by itself because then we're changing up the chemicals we're working with. We're changing the reaction. So we have to add the entire molecule. So we're going to write H3BO3. We have to add the whole thing. So we add the entire molecule. Okay, so if we add another one of these molecules, we're going to change up the numbers. So since we added another H3, we're going to have go from 3 to 6. We added an additional B, so we have 2. And we added 3 oxygens, so this number is going to go to 6. And if you want to pause and double check, you can do that. There are 3, 6 hydrogens, 1, 2 borons, 3, 6 oxygens. Now, it looks like the borons are balanced out. Um, but the oxygens and the hydrogens are not balanced out. So that means we're going to have to go to the left side, the reactant side, in order to balance them out. Now, if you notice, oxygen is in both of the molecules. There's oxygen here and oxygen here. So which one should we add? So if you take a look at what we're not balanced out in, we're not balanced in oxygen and hydrogen, right? There's four oxygens on the left and six on the right two hydrogens on the reactant side and six on the product side. So that means we need to fix up both oxygen and hydrogen. And so what we're going to do is we're probably going to want to add more H2O because we don't want to mess up the borons which are already balanced out. So let's add another H2O. So if I add H2O, right, I'm going to add another one of these. I've added two more hydrogens, so I can do two plus two, which will get me to four. And then for the oxygens, I added one, so this is going to go up to five. And if you want to double check that, it's three, four, and five. All right, we're still not balanced, so we're going to add another H2O. So if we add another H2O, we're going to add two more hydrogens. That's going to take my number up to six and my oxygen up to six. And now everybody is happy. Everything is balanced out. Two of two borons on each side, six oxygens and six hydrogens on both sides. So now we're just going to finish up the problem by writing out the balanced equation. We're just going to copy down the chemicals that we have and write the coefficients. So we have B2O3 plus H2O. But if you notice, we have one, two, three H2Os. So we're going to put a three in front. Produces. And then we have two of these molecules here. So we're going to put a two in the front, H3BO3. All right, so that's the balancing part. We've done the balancing. Now we need to write the state of matter notation. So we just need to go through and write down if it's solid, liquid, gas, or aqueous. So it looks like B2O3 is a solid. So B2O3 is a solid, so I'm going to put parentheses S as a subscript here. H2O is a liquid, so I'm going to put parentheses L to represent that it's a liquid. And 
H3BO3 is dissolved in water. So if something is dissolved in water, that means it is aqueous. Aqueous, the symbol for aqueous is parentheses AQ. So we're just going to put AQ. And there you go. This is going to be our balanced chemical equation. All right, so we've balanced the chemical equation. Um, and now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing dimensional analysis with this. OK, so make sure you guys have this copied down because I'm going to get rid of it. And then we're going to go over the we're going to do dimensional analysis with it. OK, so we have a three in front of the H2O and then we have a two in front of the H3BO3. Now let's do the dimensional analysis. So this is what the dimensional analysis portions of the problems are going to look like. So the question is asking us how many B8, B or H3BO3 molecules will be produced in this reaction if there are 150 B2O3 molecules in excess H2O. Now this might seem like a lot of information, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to break it down like we did before with our old dimensional analysis problems. Okay, we're going to start off by writing down the given. So again, we always start off by writing the given. And we also want to figure out the end. Okay, let's start with the end because the end is usually a little easier to find. You're going to look for key phrases like how many, how much, right? What you're looking for. So the question asks how many H3BO3 molecules will be produced. So that means what we're looking for is H3BO3 molecules. Okay. Now the given, it's always going to be a number followed by a unit of measurement. Okay. So if we look at this problem, the number is 150 and the unit of measurement is B2O3 molecules. So we're going to write 150 B2O3 molecules. Now there is some additional information in this problem. It says that there's excess H2O. Now we'll talk more about this uh, later in the semester, but just remember if that word excess, excess is there, that means there's so much you don't need to worry about it. Okay, there's so much, no worries. Okay, you're not gonna run out of it. Okay, just keep that in mind. So whenever it says excess, hey, you don't even need to think about it in your calculations um, because there's so much of it. It's almost like you have infinite money, so you don't need to worry about money when it comes to paying bills or something like that. I know we all wish that was true, um, but no one has excess money. But here in this problem, we have excess H2O, so we have so much we don't need to worry about it. Okay, all we need to worry about is B2O3 and H3BO3. So what we're going to do is same thing as dimensional analysis. We're going to take our given. So we're going to start by writing 150 B2O3 molecules. We're going to set up a fraction. Now, we don't want B2O3 molecules. We want H3BO3. It's a different chemical. So what we're going to do is we're going to put B2O3, the thing that we're trying to get rid of, this part right here, we're going to put that on the bottom of the fraction. So we're going to put B2O3 molecules is going to go on the bottom. Okay. So what we're trying to get rid of, we put on the bottom. Okay. Now, what do we want to put on the top? We want to put what we're looking for on the top. According to this problem, we're looking for H3BO3. So we're going to put H3BO3 molecules on the top. Okay. Now, if you guys remember our original dimensional analysis problems, uh, we write the fractions by looking for ratios or some type of equations, right? We learned about things like how one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds or how um, 1,000 uh, millimeters equals one meter. We had um, these types of equations, but here uh, we don't have any equations. So instead, what we're going to use is we're going to use the chemical equation right here. We're going to use our balanced chemical equation and we're going to use that and put that into our fraction. Okay. Let me just erase this real quick. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take what the information that we have here in the balanced chemical equation and put it into our fraction. So it's very simple. All we need to do is look for the chemical. So here we're looking for H3BO3. So I'm going to look for H3BO3, which looks like it's right here. And we're going to see that the number in front of it is 2. So we're going to put a 2 in the front because there's a 2 in front of H3BO3. Right, because this chemical equation tells us, hey, if I have one B2O3 and three H2O, I can produce two H3BO3. So this is that's what this chemical equation means. So that's an equivalence. It's like one of these equations right here. So we're just going to take the number in front of the chemical that we're looking at and put it on the fraction. All right, that means we're going to look for um, B2O3 and B2O3. It didn't have a number, and if there is no number, it means that it's 1. So we're just going to put a 1 on the bottom of the fraction. Okay, So we've set up our equation, and we can see that these two things can cancel out. B2O3 disappears, and the only thing that we have left over is H3BO3, which is exactly what we were looking for. And so we can solve this out. So all we need to do is multiply the tops, 150 times 2. You can punch that into your calculator. You should get 300 divided by the number on the bottom. 300 divided by 1 is 300. So we're going to write 300. And then the unit of measurement is going to be H3BO3 molecules. Okay, And so that will be your final answer. So the dimensional analysis for this is going to be very simple. All you need to do is find your given, find your end, and then you're going to set up your fraction. All righty, let's move on to the next question. All right, so for this problem, I'm going to balance it out. But before I do, let me uh, pull the dimensional analysis part up so that you can try it on your own. So if you feel pretty confident doing this on your own, you can uh, pause the video and uh, solve out the balancing. If you feel really confident and you want to do the dimensional analysis, you can do that too. But if not, I'm going to go over it step by step. Okay. So if you want to try it on your own, pause the video right now. Okay. For this problem, we're going to start off again by balancing and then we're going to write the state of matter notation. So let's balance. I'm going to split up my chemical equation and I'm going to write down everything that I need. So I'm going to write that there's Na, there's sodium, there's sulfur, and there is oxygen on both sides. Now we know that both sides of the equation will always have the same types of chemicals, so we can just copy that down. How many Na's do I have? I have, looks like two. How many sulfurs do I have? I have two. How many oxygens? Three. So two, two, three. All right, let's look at um, the other side, the product side. How many sodiums do I have? I have two. How many sulfurs do I have? I have two. And how many oxygens? I have two. So it looks like the sodiums and the sulfurs are balanced, but our oxygens are not balanced. So we want to start off by always writing down or adding to the side that has less. So let's add to the side that needs oxygen. So I'm going to add another oxygen right here. I'm going to add O2. If I add O2, I have two four oxygen, so now I have four. Okay, But that means that we need to add more oxygens to the left side, the reactant side. So I'm going to add this chemical. I have to add the entire thing, Na2S2O3. So how many sodiums do I have? I have four. How many sulfurs do I have? I have four. And how many oxygens do I have? I have six. So it looks like we've messed up basically everything again. So let's start by balancing out the Na's. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna add Na's to the product side, the right side. So I'll have to add this entire chemical, Na2S2. So if I do that, my sulfurs on the right side becomes four. The sulfurs on the right side becomes four. And so it looks like the sodiums and the sulfurs are balanced out but the oxygen is still not balanced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more oxygen to the right side. That's going to get me to 6. Okay, so we're now all balanced. 
And all we have to do is we just need to have write the balanced chemical equation with the numbers in the front. So how many Na2, Na2S2O3s do I have? I have one, two. So I'm just going to put a two in the front. Okay, how many Na2S2s do I have? I have one, two. So I'm going to put a two in front of there. And how many O2s do I have? I have three. So I'm going to put three in the front. Okay, so there you go. That's how you balance out this chemical equation. Now, before we do the stoichiometry, I'm just going to erase this just so that we have some space. Okay. All right, so for the stoichiometry, I'm not the stoichiometry, sorry, the dimensional analysis. Uh, for the dimensional analysis, all we need to do is we need to figure out the givens and the end. So let's do that. I'm actually going to pull up the question. And then let's get started. So let's start with our given and our end. So I'm going to write it right here. So I have my given and I have my end. So for my, let's start with the end. How many of, and it looks like it's big, bolded, and big, bolded, underlined, italicized. So this is important. How many of each product molecule will be produced? So that means in this problem, we're looking for each product. Now we learned that the product is whatever's on the right side. So we're looking for everything that's on the product side. So we're going to be looking for this and we're going to be looking for this. That means this is going to be two problems because I'm going to be looking for the Na2 S2 molecules and I'm going to be looking for the O2 molecule. So there's going to be two things that I'm looking for. Okay, and in this problem how many of each product will be produced if there are a hundred or 1,234 Na2S2O3 molecules? Okay, so that's going to be my given and my end. So I'm going to be doing two dimensional analysis problems here. The first one that I do, I'm going to be going from this molecule to Na2S2, and then the second one, I'm going to be going to O2. So let's start. Let's focus on one at a time. So let's do my first one. My first one, I'm going to start with this right here. I'm going to always write down my given. I'm going to write 1, 2, 3, 4, Na2, S2, O3 molecules. I'm going to set up a fraction. I want to get rid of Na2, S2, O3. So I'm going to write Na2, S2, O3 molecules on the bottom. And what I'm looking for in the first one, the first one that I'm looking for is going to be this Na2S2. So I'm going to write down Na2S2. That's what I'm looking for in the first one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the chemical equation to put our numbers into our fraction, and we'll be all done. So very simple. Let's look for Na2, Na2S2O3, the one on the bottom looks like we have the number 2, so I'm going to put a 2 on the bottom. And Na2S2, we also have a number 2, so we're going to put that on the top. So what's going to happen is these two things are going to cancel each other out. And then since there's a 2 on the top and a 2 on the bottom, these can also cancel out. And if those cancel out, they become 1. So our final answer for this problem, very simple. We just need to multiply this by 1. So our answer is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, Na2, S2 molecules. Super easy. All right, let's move on to the second one. So we figured out this one right here, Na2, S2. So we're done with that. Now we need to figure out how many O2 we can produce. So we're just going to set up another problem. So 1, 2, 3, 4, Na2, S2, O3 molecule. So it's the same thing. We're starting with the same given, but our fraction is going to be a little bit different. Okay, the first part of the fraction is the same because I want to get rid of this still. So I'm going to put Na2, S2, O3 on the bottom. And then on the top, I'm going to put what I'm looking for, which is going to be O2. I'm looking for O2. So I'm going to put O2 on the top. 
All right, let's get our numbers from the chemical equation. So same thing, Na2S2O3 has a 2 in front of it, so I'm going to put 2 in front of it on the bottom. And O2 has the number 3, so I'm going to put a 3 on the top. And then these two units are going to cancel out, and now we just need to punch this into a calculator, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so we always want to start off by multiplying the tops and dividing by the bottoms. So let's do that. We're going to multiply the tops and divide the bottoms. That's a good place to put this. Let me uh, erase this real quick. Okay, so we're going to start, we're going to punch in our given number. Okay, our given number is 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to multiply by the tops, so we're going to multiply by 3. And then we're going to divide by the bottom, which is 2, so we're going to divide by 2. And there you go, that's going to be our final answer. So our final answer is going to be 1, 8, 5, 1. And the units are going to be O2 molecules. Okay, so what this is basically telling us, the whole point is to say, hey, if I have 1,234 molecules of NaS2O3, it's going to make 1,234 Na2S2 molecules, and it's going to make 1,851 O2 molecules. All right, so that's how you do uh, balancing chemical equations with a splash of dimensional analysis in it. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'm in the Zoom call right now, so if you guys have any questions, make sure you guys let me know. But other than that, uh, good luck on your assignment, and we'll see you next time.